What you guys got another video here for you. This is part two of how to uh, do data recovery on a Western Digital My Home Cloud NAS drive. Now, if you've got one of these and the drive is still functional, but the unit itself is broken, then you'll need to shuck or basically dismantle or dissemble this from the actual uh, housing here and get the drive out. I've made a video showing you how to do that. You can check that one out. It's the previous video to this one. I'll leave a link in the video description. But basically, once you get the drive out, you'll be able to do some sort of data recovery on there. Now, I did a secure erase on this by mistake. Someone told me to do a, uh, a, a reset, and it actually secured erase the partition table, which is, means all the data has been erased on the drive. I pulled, pulled the plug out just in time to stop the data being fully secured erased. So the partition table has been uh, but secured erase. After about a minute, I pulled the uh, plug out, realizing that it was a secure erase. So here we go. We've got the data on the drive that we need to try to recover here. And I'm going to show you the steps to do that in this video. Now, these run on a Linux based system. So it is a Linux uh, based system on here. So you're not going to be able to plug this into a Windows computer and just drag your files off. You'll need to do a certain type of technique to be able to get access to your data. And I'll show you both of these methods on how to get access to your data if you haven't done a secure erase and it's on there and the unit has failed or whether your data has been uh, wiped out. As long as your drive is functional, we can put it into a hard drive uh, docking station like this. And this is what you can do. And just power this on and plug this into your computer. This uses USB 3.0. So data transfer is not going to be too bad. It's not going to be the fastest. But this is the drive that we're going to be scanning on our computer. So we need a good working computer to scan this drive in this method. Another way is plugging the drive into the computer on a spare um, SATA power lead and a SATA cable going to the motherboard, as you can see here at the back of the shot here. I've got it plugged into the computer. This is probably the better option because you're going to get better performance and better speed at scanning and stuff like that. So I've got it plugged in like this. I've also got a place to store the data. So if this is a four terabyte drive, I'm going to be backing it up to this six terabyte drive inside here. So as you can see, I'll be scanning that drive and then recovering the data if I find any onto this six terabyte drive, which will be a bit slow because we're using USB 3.0. So here is what it looks like when you plug it in. You've got a ton of drives on here. And it can be a bit daunting looking at this, thinking what is going on here. But this is basically how it looked when I pulled it out of the uh, casing. And uh, you can't access this at all. So let me show you basically what you uh, can do to try to get access to this. You can use a program like this Linux file system for Windows by uh, Paragon Software. This is a really great tool. If you haven't done any sort of a race on the drive, and the data still there, but the unit is packed up. You can install this on your system. And basically, it's going to allow you to access that data on that drive. And I'll show you basically what it looks like. It's £16.99 uh, to basically use this software, which is a lifesaver, really, if you haven't done any sort of erasing on that drive. Let me show you what it looks like and how it works. Now, unfortunately, this is not going to work for me because we have erased our data. So that's made it much more difficult for me to get my data back. So let me go ahead and install this on here. And you can see it's asking to add the environment variable path uh, for the Linux file system for Windows by Paragon software. So I'm going to say, yes, install this. And once this is installed, it's pretty simple stuff. I'll show you how it works. So hopefully your drive is intact and you've now connected to the PC and you install this software and you will then see all of the file system and uh, you'll be able to access that and then copy all your data over. So you can see here, start the 10 day trial or activate uh, Linux file system for Windows by Paragon software. So I'm going to start the 10 day trial here and there we have the software here. It's just loading up. And now once we've got this loaded here, you're going to see an area down here which basically mounts our drive here. You can see we've got the uh, drives here. So this one down the bottom, this volume 24i, 
is the one that's the four uh, terabytes. So that's the one that's going to have all of our data. So you can see it's now file system is ext4 and the partition style is GPT there. Mounted, yes, it's in read and write, which means you'll be able to copy the data. So if you go to that location, uh, you should be able to see all of the data on that drive. So when you click on here, you will see uh, folders inside here with all data on them. So hopefully your data will be in one of these folders and you'll be able to then recover that data as long as you've not formatted the drive or reset it, i.e. secure race and reset it. You should be able to get your data, copy it across onto a new drive and it will be inside one of these folders. You can see mine have all gone. So there's no movies in here. There's nothing. It's been completely erased uh, by using the secure erase by holding the reset button down for 60 seconds. If you do that, your data will be erased. So be careful and it will be very, very difficult to recover that data. And you might not be able to even recover that data using software. You may need to take it to a specialist to recover data if you've used some sort of secure erase on it. It may not even be possible to get that data back. Now, I don't know where I stand at this point. I do now, but at that point, I didn't know where I stand about recovering the data because obviously I quickly did the secure erase and then I pulled the plug on the drive itself to stop it completing its task. So I know it has done some sort of a race, but how much damage it's done, I really don't know. So let's take a look at the second option available to basically uh, recover our data. So this method, you'll be able to copy your data straight across to a new drive. That's if you can find your data there. If you've done what I've done, then you won't be able to use this method. But this is a really good method for recovering data from one of those drives. So put that in your little favorites list. It's a really good option. So next up, we're going to be looking at the data recovery process, and we're going to be using Get Data Back. Now, I've used this program for many, 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 many years. It's never let me down, and it's always managed to get data back for me, and I've never, ever failed to get data back from this uh, method. Now, when you scan the system with this piece of software, it's not free. You do have to purchase it. We're going to be using the EXT uh, you can see the four terabyte here at the top. This is the one we need to scan. And that's the one with all the data that's been deleted on it. So I need to scan that there. And the good thing about this, it does recover data from NTFS, FAT32, FAT and EXT and all that sort of good stuff. So you can see it's done a quick scan here and it's found some of these files here, but there's no data on here. It's gone. So it was in the process of rebuilding the structure for that drive. And uh, that's no good for us. So you can do which level you want to choose here. I would advise that you do the level four, which is the complete drive scan to find any data trace. But this is very, very slow. I did try the level three and it didn't work. But I have tried level four and I have since recovered data. I'll show you that process. Uh, so I did try this first method, which didn't work. So you definitely want to be using the uh, level four there. So it will go ahead and scan the drive. And I can see some uh, numbers up and some errors coming up here. So I'm hoping that we can recover the data here. Now, during the scanning process, I did receive some error codes. And this is sometimes pretty common. You can see input output error, unknown error, 23 reading sector. So it looks like uh, there could be some bad sectors on this drive. So I'm just going to ignore those and hopefully we can still recover data from uh, this drive. So let me go ahead and just say ignore all here and then hopefully we can still continue the scan and recover the data from here. So it's going to extract the EXT uh, inodes on here. And uh, this will take a bit of time. So just be patient here. This scan in process takes many, many hours. You're probably going to need to leave the PC running overnight to scan. And once that's completed, you will get something looking like this. Now, I've already copied all over the files, which is four terabytes to a USB drive, which took literally a whole day to do a night. So 24 plus hours, maybe more than that. To copy all the data over but it was in this lost and found area here when you hit the 
plus sign here, it will take you to this folder. Inside the data, I found another folder called files. I clicked inside here, and this is where I found a bunch of folders. And you can see here, there's loads of them, A to Z, uh, capitals and lowercase. Now there's good news and bad news that's come out of this data recovery. Yes, I've managed to recover the data, but unfortunately all the meta information like the titles and the file extensions have been completely obliterated. The files are in good working order once I recovered them, but as you can see here, they're all different sizes and you would need to know what these files are. When you look at the information, it just says type file and there's no information here. So you're going to need to go and find a program to rename all of these files, which is a bit of a nightmare, but you do have your data back. I'm, I'm going to make another video, hopefully to try and make this a simpler way. And if it is a simple way, then I'll make a video showing you how to do that. But you can see here, we do have also delete and duplicates. If you've got any duplicates, you can delete those and remove them. And I've looked right away through here, and this is the only folder I found with uh, data that's recoverable on here. And literally I just copied the whole of that folders uh, files folder onto another drive. Now, like I said, this took quite some time. It took over 24 hours. So I left that computer running all night and I had to keep getting up to check it. And it was uh, obviously stopping every now and again to ask permission to do a certain overwrite. And I had to change the name of the folder so it didn't overwrite it because there was capitals from A to Z uh, folders like A, B, C, and so on. And then there was a lowercase A to Z, and it wanted to overwrite those folders, and I had to keep telling it not to and change the folder name to a dash A so it wouldn't overwrite them, because they both had different files inside them. So it turned out to be a bit of a nightmare, um, but I managed to get it sorted out, and all the files are there. Now I need to find out what files are what, and use some software to rename these, uh, block rename these. Now, remember, you won't have to go through this process if your data is intact and you haven't used the secure race method to do it. So be very careful. As soon as that unit is starting to fail, stop what you're doing and, and basically rip out the drive and then drag your data off with the first method. You can see here all of the folders inside these files here. I've literally uh, just basically... Uh, rename some of these to make it easy but i've recovered all of this data so let me just quickly show you here it's going to be a long process but i'm just happy to have the data back um, and that's basically it so you can see i've already got a file here and renamed it and you can see now the file does work um, on here all of the files are work working and all of the images do work i'll quickly show you an image here in a second you can see the files here all listed out here. It's going to take some work, but might be able to use some sort of software or method. If someone's got a good idea on how to do this very quickly, let me know in the comments section below. I really will appreciate it if you can uh, let me know a quick method to renaming these files. So you can see here, this is a particular type of list, and you can see some of the bigger ones here are probably going to be movies and stuff like that. But there's some other files in here like images from my phone, all sorts of stuff like that. So it's possible to recover these. I'll quickly show you here an image here. So let me just quickly rename this to .png and you'll see exactly what happens. So when you do .png and double click on this, this will open up the image and they are working. So they are all intact and working. So very, very happy indeed. So quite a few people was wanting to see this video. So I thought I'd make this video. It's been a long process. It's took me a few days to get this data off. So I hope you appreciate uh, this type of content. It does take a long time and I've tried to cover as much of the process as possible. But basically that is how you can uh, use data recovery methods to recovering data on a Western Digital Home MyCloud uh, type of drive or any other type of these Western Digital systems. Uh, how to get the data off. That's basically how you can do it. Anyway, I hope this video has been some sort of use to some of you guys out there. I know someone in the comment section said they've got one of these bit of data on it and they want to know how to recover it. Basically, that's how you do it. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. 
Just want to say a big shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Don't forget to pop over on our Discord server. The link's in the video description if you want to join our community. It's free to join. I shall see you over there.